Hello AP Biology students, we're going to cover the last section in unit zero. And in this section, we're going to cover something called the chi-square equation. This is going to round out unit zero and specifically our content about statistics and the math that we're going to be using in this class. So first of all, don't get scared by this equation. Once you practice with this a couple times, it becomes a lot easier. The chi-square is the equation to analyze if the differences in data are due to chance or a variable being tested. Another way of saying this is the chi-square analyzes the expected results with the observed results. So for an experiment, we can have expected results. This should happen. However, we get the observed results. This equation looks at and compares the observed, what we see and what we take the data from, with what we expect to see. Now, what we are able to do with the chi-square is calculate something called the p-value. The p-value is the measure of the evidence against the null hypothesis. And remember back, the null hypothesis just states there is no difference between the expected and observed results. Now again, this is for a general AP Biology class, not for a statistics class, but a smaller p-value means the test is significant, while a larger p-value means the test is not significant and it may have occurred just by chance. Something to remember when calculating this p-value is if the p-value is less than 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. And if the p-value is more than 0.05, you fail to reject your null hypothesis. You might be wondering again why we're using this 0.05 number. That comes from having that 95% confidence interval. One of the most important parts of this equation that students need to understand is that this x squared does not equal the p-value. This x squared just represents the chi-square, what we're going to calculate. The second biggest mistake students make is thinking that this x squared means that you have to square root this side as well as square root this side. That's, again, not the case. x squared literally means the chi-square value. This big E, as I like to call it, or the summation sign, just means that we're going to add up all of the values to the right here. The O represents the observed data. This is the, what we collect. And these E's represent expected values. This is what we calculate before the experiment. So again, when we get done calculating everything on this side, that number represents the chi-square. We use this chi-square value on something called a chi-square chart. This is a chi-square chart. And basically what this chart does is it helps us calculate the p-values for an experiment. These are the p-values up above. I like to manipulate the chi-square chart a little bit to kind of introduce this concept to my students and show them the critical values here, which are along the 0.05 p-value. Now remember, if the p-value is lower than 0.05, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is larger than 0.05, then you are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now your next question while looking at this chart is why do they have different degrees of freedom or different lines here? These lines represent different degrees of freedom, which are the numbers of outcomes for your experiment minus one. The critical value is the cutoff value. And again, we find that using the chi-square chart. So again, on the left-hand side here, you can see we have the degrees of freedom, and they go down to five. Now, they can go further and further as you add on more variables. But your critical values are going to be found here at the 0.05 p-value mark. Now, your next question might be, why isn't there a zero value here? Well, if there's only one value or one possible outcome, then it's really not an experiment. You have to have at least two outcomes. For instance, flipping a coin, there are two outcomes, heads or tails. For our first practice problem for this equation, we're actually going to use the heads or tails flipping of a coin. That means that the degrees of freedom is going to be on that first line, which means our critical value is going to be 3.841. For our second example problem, we're going to look at rolling a dice, one dice, um, which means there's going to be six outcomes. So six minus one is five. So our critical value is 11.070. All right, so let's do that first practice problem. How many times do you expect to get heads and tails if you flip a coin 50 times? So again, since there are only two outcomes, you can either be heads or tails. It's going to be 25 and 25. However, you flip a coin and you get 28 heads and 22 tails. Is that in the realm of possibility? And yes, there is a possible chance that you flip 50 heads and zero tails. 
but we're just saying in the realm possibility for our experiment. Is getting 28 heads and 22 tails in the realm of possibility? So again, all the chi-square does is it looks at our observed values and our expected values and say, hey, is this in the realm of possibility or is some other variable affecting the outcomes of this experiment? For instance, is the coin weighted? So now that we have our experiment, let's plug in the values. Again, we're going to start out with x squared, which is our chi-square variable. Our big E summation sign, which means we're going to add the two variables once we're done going through the equation. So for our first variable, this is the number of heads that we had. We had 28 heads, we expected 25, and we put 25 down here as well. And we add the tails variable. For tails, we expected 25 but got 22, so it's 22 minus 25 squared over 25. 28 minus 25 is 3, 3 squared is 9. Over here, 22 minus 25 is negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9, so we're going to place 9 over 25 plus 9 over 25. When you add these two values together, it's going to be 18 over 25 or 0 0.72. Again, one of the most common mistakes I see with students calculating this is they think they have to take the square root of this side and this side. Remember, x squared is your chi-square. So our chi-square value is 0 0.72. Our second biggest mistake I see students making is that they, they think this is the p-value. This is not the p-value. This is the chi-square value. We're going to use this to figure out what the p-value is. All right, so now we have to find the critical value. Which one of these numbers highlighted is going to be our critical value? Remember that we're on the first degree of freedom here. So our critical value is going to be 3.841. That's again because we had two outcomes for our experiment. It's either going to be heads or tails. 2 minus 1 is 1, so that means we're on the first degree of freedom. Our critical value is 3.841. If our chi-square is larger than this, we are going to reject our null hypothesis. If our chi-square value is smaller than this, we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So now what we have to do is we have to find where this chi-square value is going to be along our chi-square chart. Obviously, we can tell that 0 0.72 is not larger than 3.841. It's going to be somewhere between 2.706 and 0 0.455. Now you might be wondering, what is the actual p-value? Our chi-square is 0 0.72. It's going to be a little bit larger here and to the right here. But what is the actual p-value? Well, again, it actually really doesn't matter because all we know is that it is larger than 0 0.05. As long as the p-value for our experiment is larger than 0 0.05, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. It really doesn't matter if it's 0 0.1, 0 0.5, or 0.75. As long as it's larger than 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And that should make sense. The null hypothesis states there is no significant difference between the expected and observed data. We fail to reject that. We can't say that that null hypothesis is wrong. Looking back on our data, yeah, this does kind of seem like it falls in the realm of possibility. If you flip a coin 50 times, yeah, there's a chance it's 28 and 22. Let's do another quick practice problem using the chi-square. You roll a dice 36 times. Now remember a dice has six sides. So if you roll a dice 36 times, you should expect to get each number six times. However, these are the values that you get for each of the numbers. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six. You should get six of each of the numbers, but you get this data. Again, is this data in the realm of possibility? So pause the video if you want time to calculate the chi-square. But you can see I did it here. You can see the values that we got for each of the different variables, one through six. We calculated our chi-square and our chi-square is 18.3. Now remember, this experiment is different. Since there are six total outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, six, our degrees of freedom is five, six minus one is five, so we're on this here line, which means our critical value is 11.070. Our chi-square is 18.3, which means it's over between these two numbers. And that means our p-value is going to be smaller than 0.05, which means we reject the null hypothesis. That means something is going on here. Some variable is influencing the experiment. And we don't expect normally to get these values for rolling a dice. All right, we have to end this with a joke. Sup, have you heard the latest stats joke? Probably. Get it? Pro probably because it... Okay, bad joke.